الو دروان ام دكتور علاء مصباح بروفيسور في اوبستاتريكس اند جينيكولوجي فاكولتي اوف ميديسن منصوره يونيفرستي ذا توبيك اوف ماي ليكشر توداي از هارت ديزيز اند بريجنسي سو وات وي ونت تو ديسكاس توداي ذا فيسيولوجيكال تشينجز ديورينج بريجنسي ذا ابيديميولوجي ذا ايتيولوجي ذا ريسكس اوف هارت ديزيز اند بريجنسي اند هاو بريجنسي كان افكت هارت problem and how heart problem can affect pregnancy then the classification we have the new york heart association classification and the modified who classification then how to diagnose then the prognosis and lastly the management of heart disease with pregnancy let us start with the physiological changes which happen during pregnancy with increased blood volume 40 to 50% with maximum volume at 28 gestational age, 28 weeks gestational age. Also, the cardiac output start to increase from the first trimester about 10%, then reach its maximum between 20 to 28 weeks, about 35 to 45% to 45% increase in cardiac output. So. What about the heart rate? The heart rate also increased by 10 to 15 beats per minute. The systemic vascular resistance decreased by 20%. Also, systolic blood pressure decreased by 5 to 10 millimercury, while the diastolic decreased by 10 to 15 millimercury early in pregnancy in the first trimester. But later on in third trimester, there is increase in the blood pressure. So, pregnancy is associated with physiologic and anatomic changes that increase the risk of thromboembolism, including the hypercoagulability, the venous stasis, decrease the venous outflow, compression of the inferior vena cava and vulvic vein by the enlarging uterus and the decreased motility, motility, mobility of the patient. Okay, so the triad, breakout triad, is present during pregnancy. Okay, so intrapartum and postpartum was also important during labor and after the labor. There are dramatic changes in the heart rate, blood pressure, cardiac output, and the plasma volume. We care that the there is increased hydrostatic pressure and decreased colloid osmotic pressure. This leads to susceptibility to pulmonary edema at the time of delivery and immediately postpartum. So this is a very critical time. The urine clipper and postpartum period. Maternal hemodynamics generally return to the pre-pregnancy state within three to six months after delivery. What about the epidemiology of heart disease and pregnancy? Cardiac disease present in 1 to 4% of all pregnancies. Cardiovascular disease constitutes 26.5% of the United States pregnancy-related deaths. And this is the commonest cause of maternal deaths in the United States. So, Heart disease considered a leading cause of maternal deaths in the United States and the other developed countries. Congenital heart disease affects nearly 1% of live births. Also in the United States, cardiovascular disease accounting for 4.2 deaths per 100,000 live births, a rate almost twice that of the United Kingdom. Higher rate of morbidity and mortality among non-white and lower income women. In developed countries, maternal morbidity, which is 11%, and mortality, which is 0.5%, secondary to congenital heart disease, have remained relatively stable. What are the common listed causes of mortality? related to heart disease and pregnancy. 
pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary edema, endocarditis, thromboembolism, coronary artery disease, arrhythmia, myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, aortic artery dissection. What are the risk factors? Non-Hispanic black race, obesity, diabetes, older age more than 40 years, chronic hypertension, obstructive sleep apnea, history of return delivery, strong family history of heart disease, and exposure to cardiotoxic drugs like doxorubicin drug. What are the etiologies? There are many etiologies as regard the heart disease with, with pregnancy, like pulmonary hypertension, like coronary artery disease, like congenital heart disease, like cardiomyopathy, valvular disease, pregnancy associated myocardial infarction. So all these are different etiologies. You can say that developing countries is different than developed countries as regard which is more common. Congenital heart disease is more commoner in developed countries. Maybe also the cardiomyopathy and the coronary artery disease. While in developing countries, the valvular lesion is more common due to rheumatic heart disease. What is the effect of pregnancy on maternal cardiac disease? It can cause congestive heart failure and which time is important? Three times is important between 20 to 28 weeks gestational age because this is the time for maximum cardiac output. So there is load over, uh, over this heart. So the heart carry a big load during this period. So between 20 to 28 weeks gestational age. Second stage of labor. Yes, with forces of labor and the trying contraction. Also after placental delivery with passive of the placental uh, bed blood to the circulation, sudden gush of this blood toward the circulation. So this is the three times which is very important and critical. Gestation age between 20 to 28 weeks, second stage of labor and after placental delivery. What else rather than congestive heart failure? Infection causing subacute bacterial endocarditis, arrhythmia, and myocardial infarction, especially in preeclampsia and eclampsia patients. What is the effect of heart disease on pregnancy? Heart disease can cause miscarriage, intrauterine gross retardation or restriction, intrauterine fetal death, preterm birth, congenital heart disease, and also other congenital malformations also may be the cause of caesarean delivery. So. You, you sometimes there is the indication of caesarean delivery related to the cardiac problem like severe pulmonary hypertension indicated to be delivered by caesarean section so the caesarean delivery considered a, a, a complications due to the cardiac problem so what about the classification? The first classification is the New York Heart Association with four classes, class one, two, three, and four. Class one, the uncompromised patient starting to be compromised from class two up to class four. Depending on what this classification, depending on the symptoms in the patient and is there any limitation of the physical activity. So this, classification test the functional capacity of the heart and it is very important so class one there is no symptoms when i say symptoms i mean chest pain palpitation or dyspnea or shortness of breath so class one no symptoms and the no limitation of physical activity while class two there is slight limitation of physical activity and the symptoms appear on ordinary activity Class 3, there is marked limitation of physical activity and the symptoms appear on less than ordinary activity. While the class 4, the severest of all, inability to perform any physical activity and the symptoms may develop even at rest. The patient may complain of or subny. What about the modified WHO classification? This risk classification integrates 
all known maternal cardiovascular risk factors, including the underlying heart disease and comorbidity. So the patient classified into four groups, a very low risk, which is class one, low or to moderate risk, which is class two, high risk, class three, and extremely high risk, which is class four, in which the pregnancy is contraindicated. Also, we'll explain more some patients between class two and the class three. Okay, certain category between class two and the class three. Okay, so let us see the summary and we will go to the details for each one. Class one, there is no increased risk of maternal mortality and no or mild increase in morbidity. While class two, there is a small increase of maternal mortality with moderate increase in morbidity. While in class three, significantly increased risk of maternal mortality or severe morbidity. While the class four, extremely high risk of maternal mortality or severe morbidity and the pregnancy is contraindicated. And if happen, we should discuss with patient if early in pregnancy to think about termination. Okay, let us go to the details of modified WHO classification and we'll start with class one and please we'll con concentrate on certain topics. Suggested follow-up, specific cardiac lesions in each class and the pregnancy care and the delivery location. Suggested follow-up means how many times the cardiologist should see the patient during the pregnancy? Is there is increased risk of maternal mortality or not? And what is the maternal cardiac event rate? Okay. So let us start with class one. There is no detectable increased risk of maternal mortality and no or mild increase in morbidity. Two to five percent risk of maternal cardiac event rate. The cardiologist should see the patient once or twice during the pregnancy. So, so, so long as everything is stable. Which lesions, cardiac lesions, fall in this category? The uncomplicated sm small or mild pulmonary stenosis, mitral valve prolapse, patent ductus arteriosus, or successfully repaired simple lesion like ASD, patent ductus arteriosus. Also atrial or ventricular ectopic beats, which is isolated one. What about the pregnancy care and the delivery location? Delivery at local hospital is okay and all the care at the local hospital. And don't forget the pre-pregnancy and pregnancy counseling. Okay, let us go to the class two. The, there is six to 10% maternal cardiac event rate. Follow up with cardiologist every trimester because there is small increased risk of maternal mortality or moderate increase in morbidity. What is the specific cardiac lesion? Maybe unoperated ASCD or VCD or repaired fallot tetralogy or aortic coarctation, most arrhythmia like supraventricular arrhythmia, Turner syndrome without congenital cardiac disease. What about the pregnancy cure and delivery location? Cure at the local hospital and the delivery also at the local hospital, but we are in need for heart team consultation and the counseling. What about the category which fall between two and the three, depending on the individual? This is a special category between two and the three. Intermediate increased risk of maternal mortality or moderate to severe increase in morbidity, 11 to 19% maternal cardiac event rate, 
cardiologist should see the patient every trimester. What is the specific cardiac lesion? Maybe mild left ventricular impairment with ejection fraction more than 45%, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, pyprocytic valve disease, not considered in modified WHO risk class one or four, morphine or other hereditary thoracic aortic disease. Also, repaired coarctation without residual, arteriovenicular septal defect. Okay. What is the pregnancy care? Pregnancy care is important in such a group. We need heart team consultation and counseling. Care at appropriate level hospital specialized with critical heart team available at any time. Delivery at appropriate level hospital. So should be tertiary hospital containing heart team available all the time with well-equipped ICU. So what about the class three? Significantly increased risk of maternal mortality or severe morbidity, 20 to 27% maternal cardiac event rate. Cardiologist should see the patient every one to two months. What is the specific cardiac lesion? Moderate left ventricular impairment, ejection fraction between 30 to 45 percent, previous peripartum cardiomyopathy without any residual left ventricular impairment. If there is mechanical valve, systemic right. Ventricle, ventricle with good or mildly decreased ventricular function, uncomplicated fountain circulation, unrepaired cyanotic heart disease, other complex heart disease, moderate mitral stenosis, severe asymptomatic aortic stenosis, moderate aortic dilatation, and the aortic size index between 20 to 25 millimeter. Tetralogy of follow less than 50 millimeter and inventricular tachycardia. What about the pregnancy cure and the delivery? Pregnancy heart team consultation and counseling is important. Care at the appropriate level hospital. Delivery at an appropriate also level hospital. The last class, which is class four, and this is the severest one. Pregnancy in this class is contraindicated. And if it happens, you should discuss with the patient if she accepting termination of this pregnancy by induction of abortion for caring of her life. Extremely high risk of maternal mortality or severe morbidity more than 27 maternal cardiac event rate, cardiologist should see the patient at least once per month, usually more than that. What is the specific cardiac lesion? Pulmonary hypertension, severe systemic ventricular dysfunction with ejection fraction less than 30%, previous peripartum cardiomyopathy, severe mitral stenosis, Severe symptomatic aortic stenosis, systemic right ventricle with moderate to severely decreased ventricular function, severe aortic dilatation, vascular ehler daniel syndrome, severe coarctation, content circulation with any complication. What about the pregnancy cure? Pregnancy heart team consultation and counseling is important. Cure at an appropriate level hospital, critical members of the pregnancy heart team available depending on cardiac disease, and also the delivery should be 
in the appropriate level hospital. Well, it worked one. Diagnosis can be challenging in heart disease and with pregnancy. Why? Because the overlap of cardiovascular symptoms with those of normal pregnancy. We know, all of us know, that there is physiological changes of the cardiovascular system during pregnancy. So, this is why the diagnosis of heart problem during pregnancy is challenging. That's why sometimes the diagnosis is delayed because the doctor suggests that this is a physiological symptoms related to pregnancy and not cardiac problem. So, you should take a detailed history, including the personal history with the age factor is important, obstetric and the past, and the family history, and the family history include inquiry about structural vascular or rhythm disorder in the family, complaint of the patient including any current cardiovascular symptoms, physical examination, general examination, chest, heart, and abdominal examination, and review of medical records including period of cardiovascular testing and the intervention should be obtained. Upon confirmation of the family history of cardiovascular disease, health care provider should ask whether genetic testing has been performed or not. A non-gene mutation such as MYH7 for cardiomyopathy may, be, may have implications for patients' individual risk of developing cardiomyopathy and may alert the patient and the core team to plan postpartum surveillance and to screen offspring. Okay, what are the common symptoms and the signs of heart disease, fatigue and shortness of breath, severe or progressive dyspnea, progressive prosopnea, paroxysm and nocturnal dyspnea, hemoptysis, increasing lower limb edema, chest pain related to effort, syncope with exertion, personal or family history of heart disease, especially in pregnancy. What are the signs including tachypnea, tachycardia, hypotension, jugular venous distension, cyanosis and the clubbing of finger, ascites and the patomegaly and the lower limb edema, cardiomegaly and the gallop over the chest, signs of pulmonary hypertension, systolic and diastolic murmur, sustained arrhythmia, persistent splitted second heart sound. What are the investigation needed? First, we should ask for natriuretic peptides, brain, natriuretic peptide, PNB, very famous one, and N terminal propane. Elevated level can be suggestive of heart failure. BNB level greater than 100 picogram per milli and NT pro BNB level greater than 450 picogram per milli suggest the diagnosis of heart failure in non-pregnant patients. But you should take care about BNB increase two folds during pregnancy normally, okay, because of pregnancy. But still the level within the normal range. Okay, so if there is heart failure, there is increase above the normal range. Then you should ask about troponin test. Troponin test, including cardiac troponin, troponin T, and the high sensitivity troponin, are specific and sensitive biomarkers of myocardial injury. So, BNB for heart failure. Trubinin test for myocardial injury. Okay? Okay. Then do some important biochemical tests like cholesterol, lipid profile, fasting glucose, or, or, or glucose tolerance test, urine for protein assessment, and protein creatinine ratio. Then ECG is very important and should be done in any pregnant patient with chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitation, to assess the ischemia if there is infarction or arrhythmia. 
But you should know that there is some physiological changes in ECG that may happen, like non-specific SCT wave and the T wave abnormalities. Present in 14% of pregnancy without any cardiac problem. Okay? So you should know about this. Any rhythm abnormality noted by the ECG should run the further evaluation. What about echocardiogram? Is it important? Yes, it is very important. Really. Women with pulmonary hypertension or unexplained oxygen desaturation should have echocardiogram before pregnancy or when pregnancy is confirmed and after pregnancy. Okay? So, echocardiogram is important before planning for pregnancy and also during pregnancy and postpartum for any suggested woman with heart disease, including correct, corrected cardiac malformation, valvular or aortic disease, cardiomyopathy, or those with history of exposure to cardiotoxic chemotherapy, like doxorubicin, hydrochloride. If there is doubt about the etiology, as well as the presence of severity of pulmonary hypertension, cardiac catheterization should be performed. The frequency of clinical and the echocardiographic follow-up during pregnancy and postpartum is individualized. Cardiac chamber enlargement, concentric cardiac remodeling, diastolic dysfunction, valvular annular dilatation, with regurgitation and the small asymptomatic pericardial effusion are frequent normal echocardiogram finding during late gestation. As we, was, we said before, there is some physiological changes in the ECG as regards the SCT segment and the T wave and so on. And so on. Also in echocardiography these are some changes that happen in late gestation no. What about the exercise stress test as you see in this picture? Is an important predictor of women's ability to tolerate pregnancy. Is an integral part of follow-up in adult congenital heart disease and valve disease and should be performed in patients with known heart disease who plan pregnancy give us an objective assessment of maternal functional capacity and facilitates the identification of exercise-induced arrhythmia. The international guidelines recommend submaximal exercise testing, 80% of predicted maximal heart rate in asymptomatic patients with suspected heart disease if already pregnant. What about CT scan? Computed tomography should be performed in pregnant or postpartum women presenting with chest pain when pulmonary embolism or acute aortic dissection is suspected. All of us know that the radiation exposure with CT is teratogenic, especially in early pregnancy. We try to minimize the dose, we try to use shield, but still it is teratogenic. But here, the suspected pulmonary embolism or aortic dissection is a life-threatening condition. So we should do it if you are suspecting this lesion because it is life-threatening for the mother. What about the contrast material? Is it risky or not? The contrast material is iodinated. It is not teratogenic, but the problem is its iodine will pass through the placenta to the baby, causing suppression of the thyroid gland of the fetus. So, will cause hypocerebrosis. So, be careful about this point that the iodinated contrast material causes hypocerebrosis in the fetus. It is recommended that contrast agents be used only when absolutely required to obtain additional diagnostic information that will affect cure.
I mean, if you can do CT scan without this iodinated contrast material, it's okay. It's very fine. It's very well. So don't use it without the contrast material. Only you, you use the contrast material if you need it urgently for diagnosis. Okay. What about the breastfeeding and the contrast material? You are doing CT in postpartum period, suggesting pulmonary embolism in this case, or aortic dissection. Is there is a risk for breastfeeding? No, little amount, very little amount, less than 1% one, 1 of iodinated contrast administered to a lactating woman is excreted into breast milk. So don't afraid about this part. What about MRI? Is there is need for MRI for diagnosing of cardiac lesion? Really, it is rarely used. In the urgent evaluation of cardiovascular problems during pregnancy. Because it is less available and there is more time consuming than CT scan. However, this imaging modality in pregnant women is important to assess aortic dimension and for assessment of ventricular function and wall motion when echocardiography is not diagnostic. There are no reported adverse maternal or fetal effect from MRI during pregnancy. However, you should know that the contrast agent gadolinium is very important. Why? Because this, this gadolinium could be teratogenic. Okay? So, the use of contrast material should be limited in pregnant patients. Gadolinium is teratogenic. While the MRI itself is safe, but the contrast material is, has a carrier problem as regard its effect on the fetus. As regard breastfeeding, shouldn't be interrupted even if gadolinium contrast media is used. Another investigation which is halter monitoring or prolonged cardiac monitoring device cover 24 hour to 48 hour ECG monitoring okay or prolonged cardiac monitoring device such as wireless patch cardiac monitor is it important it is helpful for assessing symptoms of palpitation lightheadedness and syncope during pregnancy so when indicated you should use it what about cardiac catheterization? It is seldom needed for diagnostic purposes, but can be necessary for to guide interventional procedures. The mean radiation exposure to the unshielded abdomen is 1.5 mgy, and less than 20% of this reach the fetus. In women with Congenital heart disease screening fetal echocardiogram is indicated at the gestational age between 18 to 22 weeks of gestation. Why? Because the risk of congenital heart defect in the fetus is estimated 4 to 10 percent. Imagine so. The patient, if the woman has congenital heart disease, she has a possibility to carry congenital baby, congenital heart disease baby, 4 to 10 percent. So you should screen for the fetal heart with echocardiogram, which gestational age is the best between 18 to 22 weeks gestational age. Also, don't forget to scan for other anomaly because also it may be increased in such cases. Okay?
pre-pregnancy genetic consultation and the testing. The risk of inheriting cardiac defect is raised significantly in comparison with parents with cardiovascular disease, where the risk is approximately 1%. Heritability varies between 3 and 50%. Imagine this range, 3 to 50%. But this 50% is related to certain syndrome in which the cause is autosomal dominant, like Marfan syndrome, okay, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and the long QT syndrome, because the risk is 50%, inheritance risk of 50%. That's why we said 3 and the 50%. 50% for these syndromes. Okay? Certain genetic disorders are associated with congenital heart disease like Noonan syndrome, Down syndrome, Holt Oran syndrome. What is the prognosis in heart disease with pregnancy? It depends on functional cardiac capacity, New York Heart Association classification for functional capacity, as we mentioned before. And the modified WHO classification for risk assessment. Other complications that increase the cardiac load and the medical care provided for the patient. And the cardiac failure is likely to develop in the last weeks of pregnancy during labor and during puberium. Poor outcome in class three or four, New York Heart Association classification. History of period cardiac event or arrhythmia, left sided obstruction, mitral or aortic valve, ejection fraction less than 40%. What is the differential diagnosis of maternal cardiac arrest? Alphabetically, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. A for anesthetic complication and accidents. B for bleeding. C for cardiovascular disorder. D for drugs like magnesium sulfate, E for embolism, F for fever, including infection and septicemia, fever, G for general, including metabolic and electrolyte disturbance, H for hypertensive disorder, including stroke. What is the management of heart disease with pregnancy? Let us tell you some general principle, women with any high-risk cardiovascular disease like pulmonary hypertension, congenital heart disease, and the non-congenital valvular disease, or cardiomyopathy or aortic disorder or coronary disease should be monitored during the pregnancy and the postpartum period by a cardiologist with expertise in the management of such patient or a pregnancy heart team, which is very important. A plan for management during pregnancy, labor, and postpartum should be decided and recorded in the medical and the prenatal records. Pregnancy heart team include obstetric providers, maternal fetal medicine subspecialists, cardiologists, expertise, and anesthesiologists. Then there is some risk factors that should be avoided, like weight gain, anemia should be corrected, infection should be prevented and managed if happen urgently. Hypotension is avoided, especially in stenotic heart lesions and septal defects, like VSD. Okay, so the management include brief conception counseling, management alternatives, and different cardiac lesions and problems. Then we will go to the timing of delivery and how to do induction of labor. What is, what is better, vaginal or cesarean section? How to do labor management and the postpartum care? And what about the breastfeeding and the contraceptive method after delivery? Let us start with the preconception counseling. Several aspects must be discussed with the patient. Long-term prognosis, fertility, and the miscarriage rates, 
drug therapy, estimated maternal risk and outcome, expected fetal outcome, and the plans for pregnancy care and the delivery. The patient tried to know all, all things about her condition and her prognosis. Okay? Before planning for pregnancy, and if you see her early in pregnancy also. Maternal mortality differ with various types of heart disease and the classification put by the American College is used to counsel the patient about the risks for maternal mortality caused by various cardiac disease. Corrective cardiac surgery can, reserve, can reverse life-threatening condition. Women with prosthetic heart valves, warfarin is substituted by heparin because warfarin is teratogenic causing warfarin embryobacy, especially in the first trimester from 6 to 12 weeks. Then you shift to warfarin again, and at 36 weeks, you shift from warfarin again to heparin. Maternal mortality varies directly with functional capacity. What about management alternatives, termination of pregnancy, medical treatment, and the cardiac surgery, which include valvotomy, for example, or valve replacement. And if it is urgently needed during pregnancy, it should be done in the, the mid trimester, not in early trimester to avoid teratogenic effect in the first trimester. Okay. What about termination of pregnancy? We have either medical using misoprostol with a small dose, 100 microgram, or surgical like suction evacuation with MVA if it is early pregnancy. And you should counsel the patient about the risk and the, the mortality and the morbidity with heart disease and the pregnancy. Okay? So, which is better, medical or surgical? Both of them are successful but some prefer the surgical evacuation because sometimes with medical evacuation with the use of misoprostol there may be remnant and they may be need urgently to do suction evacuation or DNC so they prefer to do surgical evacuation for complete cure for the case okay Indicated this termination if there is high risk of maternal mortality and or fetal abnormality, okay? And you should counsel the patient and take consent from the patient because you should respect the patient's opinion and they should explain everything for the patient in detail. During the antepartum period, avoid heart failure by treating anemia or preventing occurrence of anemia and infection. Also, hypertension, arrhythmia, rheumatic activity should be prevented. Cytotox causes should be managed. Excess weight gain should be avoided. Treat heart failure if it happens urgently okay intrapartum vaginal delivery is a rule if no obstetric or medical contraindication okay antibiotic prophylaxis is important because of risk of effective endocarditis position lateral or semi sitting then relief is very important because it decreases tachycardia oxygen during labor second stage Try to reduce the maternal effort during the second stage by using outlet ventus or low forceps. Avoid completely ergometrine after delivery or, or with delivery of placenta. Avoid ergometrine, dangerous. Avoid pullous oxytocin, but you can use oxytocin infusion slowly and carefully. Regional anesthesia 
is preferred like epidural anesthesia for vaginal delivery and also for cesarean section. Postpartum period, you should give a care for the patient because of, there is risk of hemorrhage, anemia, and infection, and all of these precipitate heart failure and complicate the cardiac problems. And you should discuss with the patient the method of contraception, which is better for her and put them in priority. Okay. What about pulmonary arterial hypertension? It's defined as mean pulmonary arterial pressure more than 25 millimercury at rest may be idiopathic or caused by various disorders. Carries an increased risk of maternal mortality ranging from 9 to 28 percent. Imagine how risk is the pulmonary hypertension. So, all women with severe pulmonary hypertension should be advised against pregnancy. Okay. Health professional caring for women with pulmonary hypertension should ensure that women who are at risk of pregnancy understand these hazards and they receive effective contraception. Induced abortion should be discussed if pregnancy occurs. Management of surgically corrected heart disease like valve replacement. Full anticoagulation is recommended with either warfarin or heparin after counseling regarding the risk of warfarin. Valve replacement during pregnancy, open heart surgery, usually postponed until after pregnancy, however, occasionally valve replacement during pregnancy is life-saving. Mitral valvotomy gives good clinical results, but may be complicated by AF, heart failure, and thrombophilism. Mitral valvotomy during pregnancy may be closed mitral valvotomy following surgery, the class of the patient may be changed from three or four to become class one. And measure the difference after the operation. Another way for doing valvotomy is or dilatation of the mitral percutaneous transluminal balloon dilatation of mitral valve, like this picture. This is the balloon through the mitral valve. And this is a closed mitral valvotomy. What about valve lesion like mitral stenosis? Frequent, which is frequent in young women with rheumatic heart disease in developing countries and now regressing. This disease is regressing. The problem is pulmonary congestion, pulmonary edema, AF, and mural thrombus. Tight mitral stenosis, lift the atrium becomes dilated, which leads to chronic elevation of left atrial pressure and may cause passive pulmonary hypertension. The normal surface area of mitral valve, 4, cent, four squared centimeter. When it's stenosis, there is less than 2.5 squared centimeter and symptoms will develop. What about labor management and pregnancy management in cases with mitral stenosis. Let us start with pregnancy. Physical rest is important and restrict dietary sodium, especially if there is pulmonary congestion. Give diuretics, a fluid overload present, beta blocker to slow heart rate, manage tachycardia and AF with variable meal or cardio version if AF develops and the anticoagulant is very important with subcutaneous heparin, treatment of anemia infection and cytotoxicosis. Elastic bandage is important to prevent venous pooling in leg. Balloon valvoplasty may be needed in some cases with mitral stenosis life threatening. Mitral valve replacement after first trimester with heparin. Okay, this in, in 
very critical patient. We should do that. What about lipid management? Epidural analgesia is, 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 is better. Avoid fluid overload. Use a pulmonary artery caster in tight mitral stenosis. Vaginal delivery is preferable. Antibiotic prophylaxis. Postpartum oxytocin infusion is used cautiously. Blood loss needs careful monitoring and the hemodynamic monitoring during labor and postpartum. Mitral gauge is well tolerated during pregnancy, probably due to decreased systemic vascular resistance and lower risk of pulmonary congestion. Rarely, heart failure develops increased risk of AF and endocarditis. You should give prophylactic antibiotic in these patients. The risk factor include increased preload. What about aortic stenosis? Both exertion syncope or angina can appear for the first time in pregnancy in last trimester. Severe cases of aortic stenosis should undergo corrective surgery before pregnancy. Otherwise, need to restrict physical activity. Those with aortic insufficiency tolerate pregnancy well, although the risk of endocarditis and antibiotic prophylaxis is recommended during delivery. What about acute congestive heart failure? You should identify and correct the precipitating factor. Like what? Like anemia, arrhythmia, infection, excess salt in diet, excessive physical activity, and salt-retaining medication. You should ask the patient about bed rest decreased, because bed rest decreased cardiac work, but risk of venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism should be avoided by passive leg exercise, heparin, and compression stocking. Diuretics like hydrochlorothiazide, which is mild diuretic, or flusamide, which is potent diuretic, but you should take care when you are using diuretic about. Take care about daily weight. Rapid decrease in weight carry risk. Take care about the hematocrit value. Rise of, it, of hematocrit is hazardous. Electrolytes and serum creatinine, increased creatinine and decreased potassium needs therapeutic adjustment. So, should pull up if you are doing, giving it diuretics. Dejoxin, an acute congestive heart failure. Given orally, loading dose, then maintenance dose. The side effects, the commonest is arrhythmia and they treated by discontinu discontinued medication or anti-arrhythmic drugs or correction of hypokalemia. Vasodilator therapy like hydralazine, nitrates, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor, but AC inhibitor is risky and contraindicated during pregnancy. Why? Because it is teratogenic and reported that the fetus may be affected with renal dysplasia, renal failure, oligohydramnus, intrauterine gross retardation. So, AC inhibitor is risky. So, don't use it during pregnancy. What about acute pulmonary edema? What is the pathogenesis? Fluid from the pulmonary interstitium goes through the alveolar space. This inhibits the gas exchange. So, please leading to oxygen desaturation and the retention of CO2. If uncorrected, will cause hypoxia, acidosis, and death. What did the cause? Administration of beta-adrenergic agent, preeclampsia and eclampsia, congestive heart failure, all these are causes of acute pulmonary edema. What is the management? Decrease the preload by fluid restriction, diuretics, tourniquet, increase contractility by heart of the heart by digitalis, decrease afterload by using nitroglycerin. What about congenital heart disease, which is very important as regards the heart disease with pregnancy? And the commonest is BSCD, by the way. BSCD, the most common, tended to close spontaneously before adulthood in a small, moderate-sized Defects pregnancy tolerated reasonably, while 
larger defects carry risk of Eisenmenger syndrome with pulmonary hypertension. Complications include also ventricular arrhythmia and aortic valve insufficiency. While ASCD is well tolerated by the woman, sometimes maybe increased risk of both left and right ventricular failure. What about pulmonary valve stenosis and aortic valve stenosis? Let us start with pulmonary valve stenosis, which is relatively common. Mild to moderate stenosis can often tolerate pregnancy. Those with more severe pulmonary stenosis may experience hard complications during pregnancy. Right ventricular failure with risk of endocarditis, atrial arrhythmia. Rarely necessary to carry out valvotomy. Assisted delivery is recommended in these cases. What about aortic valve stenosis? With aortic valve stenosis, pregnancy is not well tolerated with high risk of developing left ventricular failure, increased risk of infectious endocarditis, high incidence of congenital abnormalities in the fetus. What about coarctation of aorta and cyanotic, con cyanotic congenital heart disease? Coarctation of aorta there is constriction in certain part of the aorta as in the picture, causes hypertension of the arms with lower pressure in the legs, increased risk of aortic dissection or rupture and the congestive heart failure, also need endocarditis prophylaxis with careful control of blood pressure. What about cyanotic heart disease? Like Fallot's tetralogy as in this picture, Increased incidence of spontaneous abortion, still birth, prematurity, and the low birth weight with phallus tetralogy. High incidence of congenital heart disease in offspring. Mother at a particular risk of thromboembolic complication, brain abscess, syncope, and sudden death. So, it is a very dangerous one. Generally, patients are advised against pregnancy, but when it does occur, need very, very special care with cardiologist and heart team. Peripartum cardiomyopathy, uncommon form of heart failure which she present in the last months of pregnancy and up to five months postpartum. So it occurs suddenly in the last months of pregnancy or in the, in the first five months postpartum, okay? Heart pumping function is reduced with an ejection fraction less than 45%. There is no other cause for heart disease. More common in women of African descent. Clinical picture, including right and left heart failure, chest pain, cough, dyspnea, and hemopsis, tiredness, and the edema lower limbs, raised jugular venous pressure, and arrhythmia. Treatment of peripartum cardiomyopathy include beta blocker, digoxin, diuretic, salt restriction, prolonged bed rest, vasodilator, and anti Agulant, like a bullet. What about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? Developmental abnormality of cardiac muscle usually inherited. It causes sickening, as you see in the picture, sickening of the heart muscle. Also, it may is congenital and acquired. Okay. Both of them are present. Can cause symptoms at any time by the age of 40. Clinical picture include palpitation, shortness of breath, chest pain, left ventricular heave, aortic systolic murmur along lower left sternal edge and mitral insufficiency murmur at the apex. Diagnosed by echocardiography, managed using beta blocker and calcium channel blocker. What about ischemic coronary disease? Ischemic coronary disease, less common in women of childbearing age. But risk factors include hyperlipidemia, hypertension, hypertriglyceridemia, diabetes, obesity, smoking, and immobility. Also can occur with congenital heart disease and infective endocarditis and the coronary artery spasm. Treatment is similar to non-pregnant women, including restriction of their activity, avoidance of stress, and the coronary vasodilators. Pregnancy associated myocardial infarction and also acute coronary syndrome and the myocardial infarction are uncommon in pregnant women. 
same risk factor like coronary artery disease also exists for pregnancy associated myocardial infarction has been suggested that certain conditions of pregnancy such as eclampsia and preeclampsia could contribute to myocardial infarction percutaneous coronary intervention should be attempted with lead covering to the mother thrombolysis also is an option however must be administered under close monitoring why because there is risk of maternal hemorrhage subchorionic hemorrhage induced abortion inducing abortion so maternal hemorrhage in general so it is it needs a close very close monitoring what about aortic dissection occurs occasionally in the third trimester or postpartum can occur as a complication in patients with Marfan syndrome or Ehler Daniel syndrome as you see in the picture this is the aortic dissection what about arrhythmia arrhythmia is a common heart disease but well tolerated in absence of underlying heart disease the choice of prophylactic antiarrhythmic drug therapy relates to the presence of underlying structural heart disease and the left ventricular function to choose the proper drug the proper antiarrhythmic drug what are the variants or types of arrhythmia like sinus tachycardia premature beats atrial arrhythmia ventricular tachycardia heart block and the heart block may be benign first degree or second degree and the complex is which is serious commonly used the drugs and their pregnancy category you can read them you should know the drugs of course gray, uh, category a and b is more safe the risk increase with c and x as you see so you can read them you know this is some examples of drugs used in heart disease pregnancy timing of delivery in women with cardiac disease induction of liver at 40 weeks avoid cesarean section if not indicated and this is important because you prevent the occurrence of premature baby if you deliver the patient earlier without any indication okay timing of induction will depend on cardiac status Aesthetic evaluation, including cervical assessment, fetal well being, and fetal lung maturity. We can use mesoprostol 25 microgram, prostaglandin E1, or dinoprostol. Okay, but dinoprostol may cause profound hypotension. But this, when injected blindly into the remitter, and this route of administration should be avoided completely mechanical missiles like cervical ribbing balloon cervical balloon is preferable as in this picture this is the ribbing of the cervix cervical ribbing this is intracervical balloon because ribbing of the cervix also artificial rupture of membrane and the infusion of oxytocin can be used safely but cautiously okay Vaginal or cesarean, which is better? The Rubak data show that elective cesarean section carry no maternal benefits and the results in early delivery and the low birth weight. Vaginal delivery is associated with less blood loss, lower risk of infection, and lower risk of venous thrombosis and embolism, and should be advised for most women. But cesarean section is indicated if there is obstetric cause or patient presenting in labor on oral anticoagulant with aggressive aortic pathology and in acute intractable heart failure with oral anticoagulant also cesarean is more safe for the baby because vaginal delivery associated with intracranial hemorrhage for the fetus take care about this part severe forms of pulmonary hypertension including as a major syndrome indicated for cesarean section not for vaginal delivery okay what about delivery in anticoagulated women 
if the patient receive anticoagulant and you are planning for cesarean section okay if she is taking low molecular weight heparin you can stop the low molecular weight heparin like an 24 hour period to surgery okay then in high risk women therapeutic unfractionated heparin can be restarted six hour post delivery and then restarting therapeutic anticoagulant dose with low molecular heparin 12 hours later a while in women at moderate or low risk the prophylactic dose of low molecular weight heparin is given at six hour post delivery what about if vaginal delivery in moderate and high risk can be converted to infusion with unfractionated heparin with regular check for activated partial solomboplastin time which is the control for heparin to optimize the control and the infusion stop six hour period to insertion of regional anesthesia or anticipated delivery but for women with low risk therapeutic low molecular weight heparin can be omitted for 24 hours to anticipated delivery then anticoagulation can be restarted with prophylactic dose of low molecular weight heparin six hour post delivery what about if the patient to come to you in urgent delivery while she is taking already anticoagulant she didn't stop it so delivery in patient taking anticoagulant carry a higher risk of maternal hemorrhage for unfractionated heparin rutamine sulfate is antidote should be given and the exact dose depending on the mode of administration and the time since the last dose of heparin in case of low molecular weight heparin rutamine sulfate should be given the half-life of low molecular weight heparin is longer and the absorption after subcutaneous injection is prolonged that's why repeated dose or infusion of rutamine sulfate may be required so there is difference between heparin and the low molecular weight heparin heparin i can give even one dose of rutamine sulfate is quite enough as an antidote but low molecular weight heparin the there is prolonged action okay so i can't know which dose is sufficient so i can i may need protamine sulfate in in more than one dose or as a, an infusion okay in case of low molecular weight heparin as you see in the picture this is the enoxaparine low molecular weight heparin an example and this is the unfractionated heparin okay and this is the antidote if the patient came to you urgently and you are afraid from maternal hemorrhage because of this anticoagulant give rutamine sulfate this to stop the action of these drugs what if the patient on oral anticoagulant like warfarin reversal in case of cesarean section cesarean section is the preferred if the patient is taking oral anticoagulant because there is risk of intracranial hemorrhage in the fetus as we mentioned before how to reverse the anticoagulant effect by using all of these prothrombin complex this one in the middle fresh frozen plasma this one and vitamin k 10 milligram iv okay so these factors antagonizing the action of this marivan or warfarin okay the target is to decrease inr less than 1.5 or equal to 1.5 okay? okay the problem is that the fetus may remain anticoagulated for 8 to 10 days after discontinuation of oral 
anticoagulants, maternal oral anticoagulants, and may be in need for fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K. This is as regard the fetus itself after delivery. Okay. So you can see from this picture, you remember, this is the oral anticoagulant, and the patient to come in emergency while she already taking not stop. So the antidote to prevent maternal hemorrhage and to decrease INR is to give fresh frozen plasma, prothrombin complex, and vitamin K. Then hemodynamic monitoring during delivery. What is it important in heart disease pregnancy? Yes, it is very important. Maternal blood pressure, heart rate should be monitored in all patients with cardiac disease. In women with severe heart disease, an arterial line provides more accurate data. Pulse oximetry is important. Continuous ECG monitoring are advised to detect early signs of decompensation and to identify those whom delivery should be expedited. Swan gains faster is of uncertain benefit, is associated with complication and should be avoided in most cases. In some high-risk patients, right atrial pressure monitoring may be considered. Epidural anesthesia and analgesia reduce liver pain and they can be used to provide anesthesia for cesarean if indicated. However, it can cause systemic hypotension in 10% of cases and must be carefully titrated, especially in patients with obstructive valve lesion. Be careful that epidural analgesia causing hypotension in 10% of cases. Okay? Be careful about this part. Labor management. Mobilization may facilitate fetal head descent and the lateral decubitus position can attenuate the hemodynamic impact of cava compression by the gravid uterus, assisted delivery by forceps of ventus, as we mentioned before, reduce maternal effort as indicated by the underlying cordic lesion. Continuous electronic fetal monitoring is important. What about perimortem cesarean section? In the case of an acute life threatening maternal event, immediate delivery should be considered. The aim of delivery is to improve the chance of successfully resuscitating the mother. So you are taking care for the mother. We need to do all the best to resuscitate the mother. Then secondary, to improve the fetal survival. It should be considered from 24 weeks of gestation as period to this time the degree of uterine vena cava compression is limited and the baby is not considered to be viable. The delivery should be performed within four minutes of the cardiac arrest. What about the postpartum cure? A slow intravenous infusion of oxytocin to unit over 10 minutes immediately after birth, followed by 12 milli international unit per minute for four hours. Reduce risk of postpartum hemorrhage and has a minimal impact on the cardiovascular parameter. What about prostaglandin E1 by exolbrostol and demisoprostol can be used to treat postpartum hemorrhage. Ergometrin and the prostaglandin F analogs should be avoided completely in heart disease of pregnancy. Solbrostone should be used with caution, given its association with cardiovascular respiratory symptoms, meticulous leg care, elastic support stocking, and the early amb ambulation are important to reduce the risk of thromboembolism. Hemodynamic monitoring should continue for 48 hours postpartum. Breastfeeding, allow the cardiac patient to breastfeeding or not? Yes, allow her. And, and maybe the breastfeeding is protective from mastitis and the bacteremia that may complicate the heart disease. Because the breast, when engorged with milk, may be 
risk factor for mastitis and bacteremia. So lactation is a protective. But be careful that most drugs used in patients with heart problem enter to the milk and thus could affect the fetus. So you should know the type of the drug and should ask the pediatrician about is it teratogenic or not? And the, uh, or the percentage or how, made, how much of the drug excreted in the milk became, because maybe very little amount, which is non-significant, okay? So we should counsel about this point. If there is maternal indication to suppress breastfeeding or prevent breastfeeding because deterioration of the maternal condition or the patient cannot tolerate the breastfeeding, so we should suppress lactation using cabergoline 0.25 milligram every 12 hours for two days or use bromocreptin, but cabergoline is much better because it is a lower side effect. What are the methods of contraception? We will discuss each one. Progestin only contraception like implant, Implanon or Dibuprovera injection, hydroxyprogesterone acetate, or levonorgestrel releasing hormone IUD, intrauterine device. Okay. Have a little or no effect on coagulation factor, blood pressure, and the lipid level. Levonorgestrel, long-acting reversible contraception implants or intrauterine device are the safest and the most effective contraceptive. However, intrauterine device insertion may cause vasovagal response. Consequently, this should be performed in a hospital setting, particularly for Fontaine and the Eisenmenger syndrome patient. And you can use the new one, as you see in the picture, this is Marina. Even just releasing, and this is a smaller one designed for menopause for treatment of certain diseases. You can use the smaller one, this, so there is no vasovagal attack in this cardiac patient. So it is a good choice if you use that, will not cause vasovagal attack because it is a smaller in size, can pass easily to so the cervix to the uterine canal. What is important benefit from Mirena or levonorgestrel releasing IUD? Reduce the period, causing amenorrhea in more than for around 60% of women, in contrast to cover the IUD, which increase the menstrual flow. So this levonorgestrel releasing IUD is of a choice. And if the patient also taking anticoagulant, so the possibility of heavy menstruation is present, and this this IUD releasing hormone suppressing the menstruation decrease the amount of menstrual blood, so it is of a choice, really. It's a good choice. What about barrier? Unreliable, but reduce the risk of pelvic inflammatory disease. This is the benefit. Some believe that if we give the patient two methods, a combination of barrier method with levonorgestrel releasing hormone intrauterine device. So one of the barrier will protect from infection and the, the levonorgestrel ID is a good choice as a contraception and reducing the amount of menstrual flow. For emergency contraception, cover intrauterine device is the most effective and additionally provides ongoing contraception or a single dose of 1.5 milligram levonorgestrel is effective if taken within 72 hours of unprotected sex with no evidence of increased rate of thrombosis. The progesterone receptor modulator, ulubristel acetate, as in this picture, has been shown to be more effective than levonorgestrel 
and is not associated with increased risk of thrombosis. This is an emergency contraceptive method. What about sterilization? Sterilization can be either female or male, female by tubal ligation or tubal ring, laparoscopic or hysteroscopic, or vasectomy in male. As you see in the picture, this is laparoscopic, this is hysteroscopic. Of course, sterilization is suitable for patient class 4, in which pregnancy can cause mortality. Combined oral contraceptive is not preferred because it contains acenyl estradiol, has great risk of thrombosis, so it is not advised to women with heart disease because there is risk of thrombosal thromboembolic complication. Thank you. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansoura University.